At the beginning of August of this year, I left to go solo backpacking the Pacific Crest Trail here in Washington. Hopping on the PCT at Snoqualmie Pass, I headed southbound, or Sobo, towards Cascade Locks, Oregon. For 17 days and 250 miles, I'd solo backpack this section of the PCT. Along the way, I went swimming in alpine lakes, ate some of my favorite snacks, got a bit of trail magic, camped at 10 sites all by myself, took in all of the beautiful views, visited various landmarks, watched countless sunrises and sunsets, got eaten alive by the bugs, and soaked my feet every chance I got. This trip reminded me how much I needed the solitude and my me time out on trail. I love the freedom of getting out on trail all alone. I love solo backpacking because I get to choose where I go, how far I go, and where I want to set up my tent each night. I get to decide how many miles a day I want to hike. I can stop to soak my feet in a creek or swim in a lake if I want to. Solo backpacking is empowering. It's a huge sense of accomplishment. It gives me a chance to face my fears straight in the face. And solo packpacking is just one foot in front of the other. It's undistracted me time, and it's really fun. So here's how I went solo backpacking along the Pacific Crest Trail for 250 miles this summer, all the way from Snoqualmie Pass here in Washington to Cascade Locks, Oregon. Let's go hiking. Okay, real quick. Ladies, have you been wanting to go on a solo backpacking adventure but feel overwhelmed and don't know where to start with planning a trip like this? Are scared of camping alone? Not sure how to handle wildlife encounters? Need help getting gear and food sorted out? Keep making up excuses of why you can't get to the trailhead? Are you letting your fears or other people's fears talk you out of going alone? Or maybe you're just tired of waiting for someone else to go hiking or backpacking with. If you want to learn how to be more comfortable and confident with getting out on trail by yourself, I've created an online program just for you. The Confident Solo Female Backpacker System is a comprehensive, self-paced, online, women-specific backpacking program that will walk you through step-by-step -step everything you need to know in order to plan, prepare, and build up your confidence to comfortably and safely go on either your first or next backpacking trip solo. In addition to the online program, students of the Confident Solo Female Backpacker System also have access to live weekly group coaching calls where you'll get customized feedback, a private online community of other like-minded female hikers and backpackers, and the opportunity to join me for day hikes and backpacking trips throughout the year. Want to see if the Confident Solo Female Backpacker System is the perfect program for you? Sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one Zoom call where you'll speak to me live and get all the details about the Confident Solo Female Backpacker System and ask any questions you have about the program. If we decide you're a good fit for the program, you'll get the opportunity to enroll in the next class during our call. Click the link below to either sign up for your free one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me or to be notified when the next round of enrollment opens up for the Confident Solo Female Backpacker System. Okay, back to the video. Day one, PCT, heading Sobo from Snoqualmie Pass to Cascade Locks. Let's go hiking! Hey, I heard you want to leave this place where we grew up. This old town, just put it all behind. Remember you. Always find somewhere to hide when we were kids so we could see and hear the water run. The river's gonna cry when you're gone. Gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. We're just gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. We're just gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. We're just gonna cry when you're. 
End of day one, super successful. Did about a little over eight miles, got to Mirror Lake, set up camp, and then jumped in the water, and it was so incredibly refreshing. The water is actually warm. It wasn't cold at all. So it was super nice to get in and rinse all the dirt and sweat off, and the sun is still up. And I have this beautiful tent site all to myself. There's a bunch of people down by the lake, but I have this beautiful tent site that you have to kind of like climb up a hill to get to, and Right now, I'm the only one here. Good morning. Day two on the PCT heading southbound. And it's 6.30. I was still the only one at that beautiful tent site all to myself. Today, got a little bit of a climb, but it's over the course of 17 miles, so let's go hiking. tent site at 4.30 today. Did a little over 17 miles. Not bad. Epic view of Rainier. Super excited to watch sunset and sunrise. And there's nobody here. We'll see if anybody shows up tonight. Welcome to day three on the PCT, heading southbound. Had a really good night's sleep last night. Epic tent site, beautiful view of Rainier. I got there super early, like at 4.30, so I had lots of time to just stare at the mountain, set up camp, eat dinner, take lots of pictures, and then got to sleep really early, like eight o'clock. And by the time I was getting into my tent, one other person had showed up and then it sounded like a larger group had showed up. So I ended up not getting the tent site all to myself, which is totally fine. But today is going to be a 21 mile day. A little bit more elevation gain than what I did yesterday. A little bit more like 500 feet more. It's still over 4,000 and hiking to Mike Ulrich's cabin which I stayed at in 2018. Excited to see that again. So let's go hiking.
last road crossing of the day, 0.2 miles to my final destination, which is Mike Urich's cabin, snowmobiling cabin in the winter, but then PCT hikers can use it in the summer. And this means I've hiked 21 miles today, my first 20 plus mile day of the season. And I'm still not broken. I feel great. I'm just really tired and really hungry. I can feel that hiker hunger kicking in. Okay, let's get there. Woke up to rain. I mean, it's a light rain. I'd say for Washington, it's a mist, but it was enough to get everything wet. It was super foggy. So I ended up staying in my tent a little longer than normal, probably about a half hour. And I'm getting out of camp now at like 7.15. Correction, yesterday was a 20.3 mile day. Today is gonna be a 21 mile day. 500 feet of less elevation than yesterday. I'm kind of bummed because today we're gonna to, supposed to get some really nice views because we're gonna be going parallel to Crystal Ski Resort, which will have a view of Rainier, but if it's raining, then we'll just be walking in a cloud. So we'll see what happens. Let's go hiking. Sometimes you wake up on trail and it's raining and you have to start your day of hiking off in the rain and then your shoes and socks get wet so then you have to hike for most of the day with wet shoes and socks and all the views are socked in with fog. It just happens. That's hiking. It's section hiking. That's through hiking. That's day hiking. It just happens. Today there were zero views of rain air. Lots of foggy views <laughs> peekaboo views of like nearby passes and peaks but no rain air but it's not raining i have my rain jacket on because it's really windy and cold but my shoes and socks are still a little damp but it's not raining and i'm only four miles from camp tonight can't win them all but you know what there's still nowhere else i'd rather be than right here Day five on the PCT. Left camp this morning at 6.30. The nice weather is back. There's not a cloud in the sky. Sun is rising. It's pretty cold, but that's to be given camping near a lake. So I'm leaving Sheep Lake now. 
two miles to Chinook Pass where there are pit toilets and garbage cans. So I'm really excited to throw out my trash. It's really the little things when you're out here doing long distance hiking. It's picnic tables, trash cans, pit toilets, just make the world go around. So really excited for that stop. <laughs> and then today, I start off the day with entering Mount Rainier National Park. Yay! With this clear weather, I am gonna get some views of Rainier. Let's go hiking. Drink? You got a fruit? No. Okay, uh, do you want uh, pudding? Rice pudding? Somebody asked for rice pudding, I never got one. No? Not me. Uh, rice pudding, tapioca. Well, that was the longest two miles that I've ever hiked. It is now 918 and I'm just leaving Chinook Pass. But thank you, Mr. Ed, for the awesome trail magic. I was his first hiker and he coursed out the entire trail magic. It was so awesome, I had everything that hikers would need. So, Thank you so much. Now it's time to go hiking. like much but it's so awesome right here there's a light breeze there's no bugs there's shade there's water it's the little things I got to camp a little after seven the latest I've gotten to camp so far in this trip and I didn't even get to the camp that I wanted to originally I do 21 miles and get to Snow Lake which is still another two miles up the trail, but I just couldn't do it. It was getting late, I was tired, and I was worried I wouldn't be able to find a tent site because on the Far Out app, it said that a lot of the tent sites were slanted. Another two miles, I would have had less light, so I actually found a tent site a mile, almost two miles from where I stopped and had dinner, and it's beautiful. It's a very large tent site, there's a creek that runs through the tent site, so there's a tent sites on the other side. I am on the north side because I want to be a little bit closer to White Pass in the morning. So this site is great. Just means that I'm 11.8 miles from White Pass tomorrow, which means I'm going to get up early. I mean, I always get up early, but I'm going to get up at 5, only by 6. It's not very hard hiking. It's a little bit more incline, and then it's all downhill, literally all downhill into white pass so I'm tired and those two hours that I stayed at the trail magic today were awesome but I just couldn't do the 21 miles with missing those two hours today so it's okay everything happens for a reason this is a beautiful tent site and as you can probably hear there's beautiful water running through it not too shabby day six it's six o'clock I'm already on trail because it's town day. White pass or bust. Let's go hiking. I just startled another hiker. I guess I do look pretty scary, but it's still buggy. I stop and they swarm. I don't know. Maybe they just like me better, better than other hikers. Lucky me, I guess. My stop into White Pass was everything I needed after hiking the last 98 miles over six days. 
I headed into the Cracker Barrel to do laundry and take a warm shower. Honestly, the best $10 shower I'd taken in a long time. Look, you provide you with a towel, shampoo, conditioner, soap, your own bathroom. This is luxurious. After finishing up my town chores, one of my students, Nola, and her husband, Chris, who had both greeted me at the trailhead with Trail Magic earlier that morning, drove me down to Packwood to have burgers for lunch. Then they dropped me back off at White Pass and left me with a case of my favorite root beer. I finished up my day at White Pass camping behind the Cracker Barrel for free before heading back out to the trail early next morning. <music> 